Why are you guys watching this video right now? Because ask that question to yourself. And the reason why you found it, because there's something about your life that's got to change. Something that's deficient. That's no longer suitable for your course of action. You've hit the wall someplace, you've looked in the mirror too many times and haven't smiled. You want to change the situation, move from where you are. The journey is not easy. But before you start that journey, mentally, you must fuel yourself with the right reasons, the right fuel to sustain the entire journey. Everyone's hot off the start, but after a month or so into it, or a couple weeks into it, with the wear and tear and the grind starts to hit you, you start losing focus on the horizon, do you not? You get caught away in the daily hiccups, the ups and downs, and the wear and tear. And you focus on the speed bumps and the daily activities, losing sight of the true purpose. When you lose sight of the purpose, you give too much value of what the pain is today. We always invest today, sacrifice today for tomorrow's betterment. But if we don't know what that betterment is, the want factor of what we're really doing it for, we can't win this war, guys. In order to be successful in the MFT program or in life in general, it's the want factor. You have a capable body to do whatever you want. You have a sound mental nutritional diet. Now what the f do you want? Once you find out you want, regardless of what it is, then you combine the mind and the body together. That's when life gets exciting, guys. Stories of inspiration where the person overcomes the odds. When you see the good man, pump the brakes. Put your hands together, man. Give credit where it's due. Remember the name of the person that overcame the odds because that same person you're going to use in your own battle one day when you hit rock bottom and you feel like the walls and monkeys on your back and Murphy's hitting you down every single step. You're going to use that inspiration to take that one more step forward that makes all the difference. Let me give you a few examples of these, of people that overcome the odds. This kid couldn't speak. Everyone else in his peer group speaking all good. He couldn't speak. At age seven, Everyone's reading and talking, he can't read. He was slowing down so much, the teachers brought his parents in and man said, dude, the kid's gotta go, man. He's just slow, he's not creative, he's slowing down the betterment of the entire class, gotta go. Parents brought him home and he's like, man, what are we gonna do with this, this child of ours? Too bad. They put him to work. He got fired from every single job he ever tried. All this guy knows up until 21 years old is failure. He's never tasted success. He just gets up and keeps trying, fails. Gets up and keeps trying. Until one day he found out what he wanted, what inspired him, and he gave it everything he had. Day in, day out, man. He burned the midnight oil so he didn't have to stay awake in the midnight hours wondering what if. This guy tried something 1,093 times before it was successful. 1,093 times, man. When the hell have you ever tried something more than 10 times before you throw in the towel? I can't say I have. This guy did. And why? That was what he wanted. How was it nourished? Failure. Everything failed in his life. So when it failed in the 1,000th time, it's like, well, fuck it, man. It's an average fucking day. It always fails. I keep on going. But his invention got smarter and, and quicker. That failure made it more and more successful. It's getting closer and closer and closer. And finally, the light bulb lit. That was Thomas Edison, man. Failure. Dumbass his entire life. He had over another 1,000 patents, man. Remarkable. Couldn't speak at four. Was written out of class because couldn't read at seven. Kicked home, saying so mentally challenged. One of the greatest inventors of our time. We all fall down in life, guys. The question is, who gets back up? Again, it's not the potential of the individual. It's not the genetics. It's the perseverance. The never say die attitude. If you constantly keep throwing shit against the wall, eventually something will stick, guys. Never give in to what you want. When you find out what you want, and you combine that with a sound mental diet, a visual nutrition, a physical diet of good food coming in with good exercise, you build the body, the belief, the confidence, you put that together with a want and a drive, dude, you're unstoppable. Your name will forever be in history. If you do it though, because it's hard, it's uphill battle, it's a path less taken, not the beaten path that everyone else takes. It's a path that leads to character. You gotta earn that. Success, guys, is a very, very lonely road, man. Very few people are willing to endure the pain, the sacrifice, the diligence to be successful. It's an uphill battle. Along that road, you're not gonna see too many friends. You see your shadow most often. You gotta trust in the heart of hearts. Inside what you're doing, what you believe in is a worthy cause, a winnable fight.
see, the thing is, for many people, they've tried the same path you're on, and they fail. As you walk this journey, you're going to see carcasses all over the place, and people that didn't quite have it. They should inspire you, but you've got to throw the net post, the post. But you're not looking to get further than you're looking to finish. How do you know you're on the right path? Where do you go to ensure that? You talk to your neighbor. No, you don't talk to him. I'll tell you about the neighbor, guys. That neighbor's gonna come in, man. And if you're a little chubby, a little overweight, you'll be like, hey, man, I'm thinking about doing a routine, man. I'm getting a training program where I lose some weight. He's gonna encourage you at first. Say, yeah, you should, you should. Basically insulting your ass, and you're fat, and you lose some weight. That's never support. It's negative shit. Oh, you should lose some weight. So then you get to take his advice, and you start training, you start doing something, you start to get in shape a little bit. Maybe at his level. Then all of a sudden he's going to start asking questions, his tone's going to shift, especially as you get in better shape than him. Then he's going to start talking shit, because what happens now, guys, is that your success is like a spotlight shining down on their missed opportunities. Success, many will love you for it. The majority will hate you, because your success makes them feel insufficient in their current endeavor, reminds them of where they could have done it but they came up short and how they didn't revisit it. Where they went at and failed, and failure is what stood. They never revisited it again. The difference between a winner and a loser, the failure is there every single time. It's just the winner gets back up and does it again, and does it again, until it goes his way. So now you're down that path and you're all alone. How do you know you're on the right path? How do you know what you're doing is in the right direction? If you're wondering if you're on the right path, look at the small things of life. How do you do them? When you wash your car, you spend an hour washing your car, and you finish washing, you put the hoses and everything away and the brushes, and you come outside to look at the job you did, but you notice the spot's missing. What do you do? Do you re-grab the hoses, pull it all out, and finish the job right, or do you say, you know, it's good enough? And it's good enough. Because the thing about good enough is we don't know if it's enough until the nth hour, the final hour, and everything's on the, on the line. We, that's when we find out if it is enough. And if we come up short, man, doesn't that suck? I promise you guys, if today you never say good enough, tomorrow you'll always have enough. What I'm saying is the character of who you are. It's not the title that makes you. It's not the success that makes you. The character defines the success, defines the fame, and it starts right there. Championships aren't won in the theater of the arena. They're one in the thousands of hours in the training room, in the labs, in the 5 a.m. runs, and then it's raining when everyone else is sleeping. That's when it's won. The Harvard champion is a light switch that's always on. It doesn't go on and off when someone's watching. It's constant. It's how you look at something. If your name's attached to it, that you do it right, the best of your ability every single time. If you're dusting your countertops, do you dust around the picture frame? Or do you pick the up and dust the entire thing. Do the job right or don't do it at all. That's the same person who has his hand raised on the podium one day. Same motherfuckers. How you hold yourself in the small things of life. Build the character winning blocks of the things that we were remembered for. I see them as one and one the same, guys. It begins right now with no one looking, man. And how you hold yourself, how you see yourself. What do you do when no one's watching? If you do it then, I guarantee you, you'll be doing it when everyone's watching. You know, one question I get a lot, guys, man, how do you not burn out? How do you stay true to the course when that course could be five years, ten years? How do you stay true to the path, man? Well, there's a real quick answer to a very complicated question. You don't burn out mentally because you always burn out physically. When you guys burn out physically, you push your current limitations to a new barrier, do you not? You hit failure and you go beyond. You force your body to create demand to grow even more. By burning out physically, you ensure that you grow physically. If you don't burn out physically, then even though you go to the gym, you put your time in there, you check the box, yeah, I went to the gym, man, all good. You come back around, you look in the mirror, man, I'm not seeing anything, I'm not seeing anything, I'm not seeing any changing, no. Well, because you haven't pushed yourself for your body to have a reason to change. If I gave a valiant effort to something, day in, day out, I saw no change, I'd probably quit too. But the reason why you're quitting, man, the reason why mentally you're burning out, is because you're not burning out physically. It's that mind-body connection of invincibility when you sync them up, guys. 
Every transformation always gets worse before it gets better. It's supposed to be that way. The journey you're embarking on here with MFT28 is not an easy path. It's not for the ill-hearted or the weak-natured. It's for the strong people. And before you embark on this journey, mentally, you have to prepare yourself for it. No one's going to get worse before it gets better. When you embark this journey, you must know that it's going to go down before it comes up. But when it comes up, it's going to go so much higher than you've ever been. Sacrificing today for tomorrow's betterment. If you're a guy that's just working out for the first time in this program, you hit a couple workouts, you're going to feel this soreness you've never felt before. That's the Dom's effect. Delayed onset muscle soreness is supposed to be that way. It means you're using muscles you haven't used before your body's waking up. Sharpening your arsenal for perfection of what you can be. But if you didn't know that, mentally, you didn't prepare for that, you think something's wrong, maybe it's time to stop. No, it's time to move even further. You have to be equipped mentally to endure this process. Knowing what you're about to go into is step one. Knowing it's an uphill battle, but a winnable one and one that's achievable. And at the end of this race, guys, you're gonna be more capable. The first step, guys, is knowing it's a tough road. But through that effort, it builds the character of the person you wanna be at the end. Accept that. How else do we stay on track? We document everything. To know where we are, guys, we must first know where we've been. And when we hit plateaus in our current day, the key to success to break that plateau is in our past. You take a picture of yourself on day one, you put it on the mirror. That's who I'll never be again. That's day one. Say goodbye to him. Behind that picture, you write down your weight, your height, all your information, your body fat, tape, tape measures around your arms, your waist, your thigh. Record where you've been. Because when the struggle gets hard, and you feel like you're not going anywhere, you go back to that day one, we measure go, it's working. How about them apples, man? I'm on set, I'm on path, I'm actually achieving something. It gives you confidence to continue the journey. Record everything, what you eat, your training habits, how you feel. But don't do it alone, get a partner. That partner, they say champions come in pairs of two because you battle yourself in perfection. There are going to be days, man, where you're dragging ass. But there's every excuse in the world why not to go to the gym. Having that partner is going to ensure you get there. We will kid ourselves, man. We will fail all the time on ourselves. But it's a sad motherfucker that fails on someone else's terms. When someone else is relying on you, then you say, no, man, I just can't make it. You won't be that guy. You'll show up just for your buddy's sake. And your buddy's energy will push you through a workout even though you're exhausted. And what's crazy about it, man, even though your energy levels are so low, by expending more energy, you just gain so much more in the back end. It's crazy. And all of a sudden, you have this natural high. But the problems you once had going before the gym that seemed overwhelming, you come out of that gym pumped up, man, mind, body, connected. Those same, same problems don't look so bad. You're generating solutions to them. You're seeing ways in and out of them all because you're thinking positively. Your partner, you owe that to. He got you into the gym, and there are going to be days he's down and out, and you're going to get him into the gym. Not only is a partner vital to get into the gym, but make sure the sets go to failure. When you hit failure on your own, man, you can't go anymore. That partner gets three or four more sets. That makes all the difference, man, of hitting your failure and going past it. That's where the growth is. Your partner ensures you get there. You gotta have an end goal in sight. What is that all about? Something in the near future, relative future, that gives value to today. 90 days out, man, I'm gonna run a marathon. 90 days out, I'm gonna enter a bodybuilding contest. 90 days out, the family reunion, high school reunion, I'm gonna look my best. 90 days to become that person I wanna be. To turn that dream into a reality, I got 90 days. Today is 190th of that opportunity. If I don't have a 90-day end state, there's no bookends. I can easily push off my responsibilities of today into tomorrow and not feel bad about it. But when there's an end, then today has value all of a sudden, doesn't it? If I blow off today into tomorrow, I just lost 190th of the chance to become that mother. You get the mind right. If you believe it, your body physically will find a way to make it happen. That's MFT 28. The differential of somebody winning and losing has nothing to do with their genetics, has nothing to do with their potential. It's their perseverance, always showing up. A person that's willing to gamble it. If you show up, then you have a chance. If you don't show up, the outcome's simple. Never there, like an audition. If you show up to the audition, there's a chance you might get the part. If you're too scared to show up and you sit back at home, 
wondering what if and everything else. No one in hell is going to call you on that opportunity because you weren't present. The winners always show up. They're willing to lose in order to gain. Big mental thing there, guys. This body, as great as you are, as sharp as you make the arsenal, it can't do anything if you don't have confidence in yourself. We all fall down in life. The question is, who gets back up? You go after and you give it all you have. If you lose, at least you try, man. I failed. It's 10 times more of a man than someone said, what if? Because what if never went to the arena? When you guys find a fear, that fear will either create you or destroy you. I love fear. And the reason why, behind every fear is a person you want to be. Fear is self-imposed, meaning it doesn't exist. You create it, you can destroy it too. It's an intangible. If you face your fears, guys, you will realize it's not that big. And once you face it, you go, oh my God, man, I spent all this time running from it. It was so small. If I just faced it, my God, not only did I face it, I beat it back, energy is never lost, transferred. That negative energy, that fear, is destroyed. It comes back in as confidence. You're like, what else, am I, what else am I capable of? What else am I holding my back from that I'm capable of more? What am I running from I don't need to? What else can I overcome? You face your fears, you become the person you want to be. You run from your fears, you're not living. You're alive, but you're not digging the freedom. You're not running the day. The day's running you. You always be the f***ing servant, not the master, guys. If you find a fear, the quickest, the easiest way you can beat it is initially, right when it comes in. If you allow it to sit, it will grow root and start breaking you down, destroying the potential of the person you can be. Again, the champions, guys. It's not their potential. It's not their genetics. It's their perseverance to always show up, always willing to fail, because in failure, that's part of success. Success is not, you know, a marathon of life of just ups. Success is formulated through failures, through facing your fears, through falling down and getting back up. That's what creates the champion. Success does not define us. We define the success.